Praise the Lord. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. It's always good to be able to praise God for everything he's done for you throughout the week. Let's just remember that today as we go in and lift Jesus up. One thing that, that was on my heart this week was Hebrews 13, 8. How powerful that is. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is always the same. Amen. Yesterday, today, yes, and forever to the ages. Folks, that's something we ought to never forget. How constant God is. How he'll always be there with you. Uh, one person said about, he says, don't tell God how big your storm is. Tell the storm how big your God is. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that because that's what we need to do. The same Jesus that healed in those days is healing now. Yeah. The same Jesus that can store, restore a broken home back then is the same one that can do it now. The same one who delivered. That's why in the Bible it constantly talks about what he is. His character. He's gracious. He's compassionate. He's loving. He's kind. He's still that way. Amen. You know, a lot, a lot of times I, I, I think about where I came from. That, that's one good thing about the past. It can teach you that where you came from. Yeah. Not for us to live back there. Because Jesus is a very present help right now. He's a living God. He, you're described when, 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 uh, when God was talking to Moses, he said, and, and Moses were, well, who am I going to tell who sent me? You know, tell, he said, just say, I am. Isn't that interesting? I am. That means I'm present. I am. And the same, the same way when, when Jesus was uh, uh, up there uh, uh, talking, they talking about how can you be the one to come from heaven because, you know, we know that you're a Joseph's son. They didn't get they didn't get the fact that he came down from heaven. And he was going to go back to heaven. They didn't get all that. And, and he said, you know, uh, he's talking about, too, he's just, he was just, it just amazed me. Jesus had so much self-control on not getting on all these arguments and, and getting stretched out in there. He just said, before Abraham was, I am. Isn't that powerful? That settled the argument. You know, Abraham was looking for me. You know, what he already said, I am he. I am the one he was looking for. I am the Savior. I am one that can change your life. That's what, and I, and I still, and I know I preach this a lot on, when, when I get up, but it's always on my heart. Jesus just wants a group of people that will believe him. Yes. That's what he's looking for. He was always looking for. That's always, he was always amazed with people that had faith because they understood that. They understood that everything come from God. Everything. You know, if, if it wasn't for God, where would we be at? You know, sometimes we think, well, we don't have this, we don't have this. Thank God for what you do have. Well, I, I want to go to uh, Psalms 84. This couple, I want to read a couple in Psalms 84. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 84. A couple of verses in here. Oh, Hallelujah. Psalms 84, again, Amplified Version. How lovely are your tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul yearns, yes, even pines. It's a homesick for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out and sing for joy of the living God. Yes, the sparrow has found a house and a swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy, oh, I love this, blessed, Happy fortune to be envy of those who dwell in your horse house and your presence. They will be singing your praises all day long. Hallelujah. Let me say that. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envy are those who dwell in your house and your presence. They will be singing your praises all the day long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say that. Pause and can't calmly think of that. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I, you know, you get, you get excited over that. And, and go to verse 11 to the end. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows present grace and favor and future glory, honor and splendor and heavenly bliss. No good thing will he uphold from those who walk uprightly. Hallelujah. 
The Lord of hosts, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envy is the man who trusts in you. Hallelujah. Leaning and believing on you, committing all and confidently looking to you and that without fear or misgiving. That's where God wants us to be at. Hallelujah. To be able to come into his house and praise God <clears throat> and think about all that he has done for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's where we, we kind of get away from where we should be and we start looking at all the stuff around us. We look at all, we see this going on, that going on. God, where are you? And he says, I'm still in the same place. God is still on his throne no matter what happens. Amen. And that's what we, uh, I, just, I just realized, that's what we should not forget. We should not ever forget how big God is. You know, and, and all he asks, think about what God <clears throat> asks from us. He wants us just to pray and just believe him. Some of the best times you can ever have <clears throat> in your walk with God is those quiet times where you decide, I'm just going to pray to you. I'm just going to leave this whole situation up to you. Yeah. I'm going to give it to you and let you take care of it. Yes. You know, and it's like, you know what? It's like when, when your kids come and they have an issue, you know what the kids love? I know when I, <clears throat> my kids is little growing up, they love those times you would just sit and talk with. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they love those times and they want you to listen to them. Yeah. You know, that little voice. They want you to listen because it's a big concern for them. You know, whether it's your kids or I used to be on the Sunday school uh, ministry, the bus, we go out and this little little girl, she was going to uh, see if she's coming to church. We always go out on Saturday and she said, Brother Tim, she'd always call me Brother Tim, would you pray for my frog, my pet frog? You know, I think he's sick. He ain't acting like he's supposed to. Now, there's a lot of frogs in the world. I, I mean, you know, you can find frogs. All right. But for that little girl, that frog meant something. So you know what you do? You pray for the pet frog. That's what you do because that matters. That matters for that little girl. And we prayed for that pet frog. Frogs, frog was, came out of whatever was wrong, you know. But it, I think the frog was all right. I see <laughs> but what I'm saying, that's important. We have things that are important to us, and we have a God that's willing to listen to us. I'm always amazed that Creator wants to hear from us. Creator likes to have that communion where we can talk. And you know what? It's supposed to, prayer is it's still it's a conversation. Sometimes we kind of make it lopsided. We go on and on and on, and that's fine. And we tell God, and we go, but you know what? Sometimes we need to. Stay our peace, set, and let God answer. Let God respond. And sometimes you can be so deep that you can't even really have words. You're kind of moaning. For God understands that. That's right. You know what I love? I always get a picture of God when you're in those hardest circumstances of him just <clears throat> wrapping his arms around you yeah. and say, you know what, my child, I love you. And we're going to get through this together. Because yes. the Bible says, for with God. For with God, all things are possible. For with him. So he's working with them. The Bible talks about disciples was working with them. God was working with them. He's on your side. One of the best things, and I, and I know as a, as a, as a teacher, um, that and, and uh, I do it for a living, but one of the things that's most valuable to every student is to let them know how important they are, yes. how important their lives are. Nobody's here by chance. You know, there's nobody. There's a reason for every person's life. And sometimes we go through this heartache and we can't understand. And yes, we can cry, why God? Why God? And sometimes God said, just wait. Just, just understand. I'm working all things for together for good. You don't, understand, you don't understand now. Some things we're not going to understand now. We might understand them later. Or like I tell some people in the hard things, heaven's the only place with all answers. Some things will never, ever make sense down here. They just will not. No. But you know what? God's still working. Yeah. Right? Yeah. God is still working. I have never, ever, I know I say this a lot, I preach, but it's still on my heart. I've never gotten, when, when God's given me an image of the throne, and it's like Isaiah, high and lifted up. When I get an image of that, I never, ever see God running around up, up in heaven, and him 
in Jesus' Holy Spirit trying to figure out what they're doing. Oh, man, we got to get a plan. What are we going to do? No, I always get a majestic view of God. And he's sitting on his throne, and it's like God saying, you know what? I can handle all this. You know why? Because I'm the creator. I can handle this. I tell that star up there to stay there, and you know what? That star is going to stay there until otherwise. On, That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's the way it's going to be. Because I, I spoke the word. Think about it. Now, it, it got, you know, God created. He spoke the world in existence. He can speak that truth in your, your situation. It's not too big for him. Right. You know, we tend to think our problems are so big. But let me tell you, we sing that song, he's got the whole world in his hand. You remember we used to sing it? Well, he's got the whole world in his hand, folks, and he's not going to drop it. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. God's good. We're going to open this up to praise God, to give testimony. Because we all got something to testify about. You know, whether it's your health or, or something he had delivered you or, or just diff different things. I mean, sometimes it's a little thing. We went to get, um, uh, you know, you go out to eat, and then the, the guy just decides to, to give you a discount on something. Well, we didn't, I didn't ask for it or nothing. He said, I'm going to just give you this. Uh -huh. Oh, wow, hallelujah. Yeah. I'll take an extra breadstick. That's fine. You know, <laughs> you know? But, but he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. You know, or give us a discount, or somebody gave me a discount, the, the senior discount, the first time I got it. I, I thought, wow, I get a senior discount now, you know. <laughs> I guess she thought, yeah. thought I was, I, I'm up there now, but she thought, she, I, we didn't ask her for nothing, you know. We got one senior discount, said, so okay, I'll take it, you know. But it is, it is favor. It is a blessing when, when, when people do these things because, you know what? God loves you. Don't ever leave thinking that God doesn't love you. He loves you so much. His word says, I love you with an everlasting love. Everlasting means it's never going to end. It's never, ever going to end. God loves you that much. It doesn't matter what happens if your whole world falls apart and things don't go the way they're supposed to. You know what? God still loves you. And that is the message people need to hear more than anything. You know, we, t we do tend to think if somebody's got money or they live in a house big enough, you have to take a taxi from one bedroom to another. It, don't, it, it, really, it really don't make any difference because they have needs too. It's amazing. They have needs. We tend to think they don't have to worry about checking the counter. They got, you know, the kids are all doing well and all this stuff. But we never know those inward battles they have inside. You know, and they might not think. I remember I was hauling furniture years ago down in Houston. And, and at the end of the time I was getting ready to leave the family, they would ask me if I wanted something to eat or some, sometimes, you know, or ask them if I could do anything, they could do anything for me. And I thought that was a great opportunity. I would say, well, the only thing I want, I'm getting ready to leave, only thing I want, I'd like to pray for the family. Wow. That's the only thing. I'm, I'm good on everything else. <clears throat> now, this lady lived in Houston. Her husband, and down there you had Mr. Control, he was some person and all this stuff down there. But their house was so big, I mean, they had their own swimming pool. It was like four or five bedrooms, this huge house. And her daughter, she had four daughters there, and they was about, you know, 15, 12, 15, around in that age. And I asked her, can I pray for you? And this shocked me. I didn't say it in front of her. But it shocked me, and she said, well, yes, but we never prayed before. Yeah. And her kids was 15 years old. And they've been blessed to have this house so big. I mean, it was just shocking to me, you know, because, you know, like Bob Hope once said, he said, they'll never take prayer out of school as long as they have tests. That's what Bob Hope said. <laughs> 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 They're always going to be praying. <laughs> and if you have teenagers, you can always pray at home, let me tell you. There's going to be prayer at home. But, you know, I was, I was shocked at that, that, that from, the, from even before those kids was born, you know, and from the time they start growing up, you always want to pray for them. Yeah. You always want to pray, even before they're coming. Mm -hmm. You know, just pray. God, when my daughter or son comes in, use them, use them, use them, let them use them for your glory, Lord. You know, my, my girls, they was dedicated back to the Lord. Yeah. You know, and I was just shocked. But you know what? We did pray for that family. We all, and the workers, I had a couple guys work with me. We had a big circle in that, and we prayed for them. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and I don't know if that was the start of something regular in there. I don't know. But you know what was important? To realize that, you know what? How much does it cost you to pray? Yeah. Time. That's it. And to get your girls in that habit of praying and get them a habit of reaching out to the God, the God of forever, the God that can change their lives. Because once eternity, once you close your eyes in this world and you're in the next, you know, it's either up or down. That's, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, and we want to make sure we know where we're going. Right. You know, you can know, you know, that you're headed and you're going to be with Jesus forever and ever. Sometimes I'll be driving my truck. And, and, I, and one day I'll be, I was looking out west, I was driving, and it's almost the way the clouds were, it's almost you can see the city ahead. It was just the way the clouds were. Yeah. And I just got to thinking, I says, hallelujah. I said, one day we'll be in heaven, and we never have to leave, no more tears. You know, you get to see those loved ones, those ones that's gone on before, and the best of all, you get to see Jesus forever and ever. Yeah. You know? You don't ever have to leave. And he wipes all the tears away. There's no more pain up there. You know, we're not going to have all the stuff we got going on down here. We're going to have people in heaven that want to be in heaven, that want to love God. And you talk about people, people say, will it be quiet in heaven? I don't believe it will. There's going to be a lot of praise. There's going to be a lot of praising God in heaven. And hallelujah, that's what it's going to be. Talk about some family reunions. We're going to have some family reunions up there. Hallelujah. 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 All right, going to open this floor up. Yes, Mike. Uh, look up Cindy. She wanted to be here today. She's been exhausted, battling with this uh, breathing issue and stuff. So I'll just keep her lifted up. Myron would have been here, only uh, the nurse is coming to wrap his leg at 10 o'clock. Uh, oh. Otherwise, he's on the road to recovery. Hallelujah. And her healing also. Pray for um, Myron. Okay. For my younger son, Jesse. I did 49 promise to return of the children, but I've got two out of four back and the other two, and, and uh, still believe in God. I mean, his time is days like a thousand. Uh, That's right. Years, years like a thousand, <coughs> thousand years like a day, but I uh, claim it for Jesse back and his younger sister to go to them. So I'm claiming them back in the name of Jesus. Anybody running in a situation that uh, they're missing out on their kids and stuff, the Lord did promise it in, in Isaiah 49. You know, I will contend with those who contend with your children. And they will be saved. So just to declare it and claim it, and I still believe it after 23 years, so I'm still standing on it. So when he has his birthday Tuesday, I pray the Lord knocks on his door and, and uh, in fact, does it right now. Hallelujah. Uh, voices of joy were here yesterday. Um, I prayed about it, and it uh, didn't take long. Sometimes you got to wait on the Lord for an answer, but he phoned me and says, no, I want them here to rehearse. They'll be here every other weekend uh, rehearsing on Saturdays and stuff. And, and uh, it's going to leave me opportunity for doing their own ministry here, possibly on Saturday afternoons. I don't know if the, uh, you know, the doors are being open. Um, I know there's been a few people asking about the car lessons and stuff like that. So it may be a time while they are here rehearsing that I can be doing that downstairs besides getting stuff ready for Sundays and stuff. So, and also kids uh, hanging out on, on the front stoop here and stuff like that. There's opportunity ministry uh, going on stuff like that. I can't do it by myself. There needs to be an accountable person here also. So we'll see what the Lord does. I just pray about the situation and the plan unfold. Hallelujah. Amen. Yep. Yep. It's it's amazing. <clears throat> As those doors open, yeah. you know, God God is good. He, he knows who to bring and where they should be at uh -huh. and whose lives to touch. It's, it's always amazing. You know, God's the great conductor, Amen. you know. I mean, he can make the music sound so good. He can get this person, that person together and bring them and bring, bring some beautiful music out of it. You know, if we, if we let God use us, you know, I mean, and just when you're totally committed to God, it's amazing what, what he can do with you. And that's all it takes is that, you know, we sing that song, so say yes, I surrender. We sing that song, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. And a preacher once said, don't sing it unless you mean it. Don't just sit out there and just sing along. Say, you want to mean it from your heart. Yeah. That's what you want. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Whatever you want for my life. Because once you yield to God, it's amazing what you see him do. Amen. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter who. If you just say, God, use me every day, 
God will use you every day. And maybe that's to pray for somebody or walk over to that stranger and say, hey, what? You know what? God put on my heart. I need to tell you God loves you. He cares about you. And they may have on their side been wanting to hear that all day long or been praying for a month. Can I share this with you? Just take a few minutes. Uh, I, I love the profession of men. I've driven trucks for years. <clears throat> well, one time I was over at Walcott, and it was in the middle of summer. And Walcott, biggest truck stop in the world, well, they was so packed up that I walked across the street, and there was a Dairy Queen. I was just going to grab something there. And it was in the middle of summer. So, so people can't tell me that God don't exist because I know just from this one incident, it proved more than anything. Well, anyway, I had been training at my church to do evangelism explosion. I had been training and I come in there, and, and, and this young lady's behind the counter, and the Lord, it was so clear, Tim, she doesn't know me. She doesn't know me. You need to tell her about me. And I mean, it was so clear. So she took my order, and I asked her, you know, um, you know, if she died at night, she'd go to heaven, and she didn't quite have the right answers. And, 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 and I got to talking, and, and you know, when I start talking about God, middle of summer, Dairy Queen, not a single person came in that restaurant. Not one single per- in the middle of summer at Dairy Queen. You know, right there at the big, I mean, that's a lot of people up that exit. Not one person. And so I talked to her and I said, would you like to receive Jesus Christ in your heart right now? And she said, yes. Brother, we prayed right across that counter. And you ought to see her face. It was real. It lit up. But thank you. Thank you. And her face lit up, and you knew Jesus Christ had got a brand new child. Yeah. All right? So I said, you know, you take care of yourself, and I'll be praying for you. And before I walked out of there, okay, after, after I prayed, turn around, then some people start coming in. It's like God shut the door. But as I turned to walk out, the Lord says, Tim, you can't just leave her. She's a babe. In Christ. She's a babe, so you need to have somebody and to, to come, get her in church so she can grow. And I thought, wow, I, I knew it was Lord. So I, I got on the phone. They had a pay phone in there, and, and I was going, I just had a phone book, and I was going down through the phone book, and it just, I just uh, went down, and you felt kind of drawn to a pastor in that area. And I called, and guess what? That pastor was home. I called. He said, Yes, sir. I says, you don't need to know who I am, but there's a young lady out here at Exit 284 at the Dairy Queen that just received Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. I need you to come out here and make sure that she gets in the church and make sure she grows. You know? And he didn't ask a lot of questions. She said, yep, yeah, give me your name, and I'll be out there. Now, God orchestrated all that, and I have to believe <coughs> that that pastor did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. Okay, and came out. And I believe one day I'll see that young lady sure. in, in heaven. Amen. And, and it was all, and I know it was God, because who shut that door for if people come? Nobody came in. You know, and I just thank God that changed that life around, but it started with just yield to God. Mm-hmm. Tim, she doesn't know me. Well, you know, God, it's kind of embarrassing to do it inside of Dairy Queen. People want the ice cream cones and, you know, be a lot of people running around. Nobody came in. God, I appointed that time for you. I, I made you a trucker years ago so you'd be at this exit. I had her work here so she would be there at this moment when you passed and they was too busy over there and you walked over here. I got you all together because I needed to have that young girl's life changed today. Yes, yeah, And that's what happened. That's yeah. how God worked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, someone else. Yes, brother. Uh, I had a wonderful time yesterday. Uh, uh, son and family come down from northern uh, Iowa and uh, uh, visited. We had uh, lunch together and, and the, we got the children some things to play with, you know, and they were just having a good time. And, and uh, uh, I didn't really check the time. 
God does best. Yes. Yesterday I had something happen to me and it rose up in me so much. I'm just texting like crazy and it was the Lord and I just feel that same mm, I'm going to let it out so I need to share it with you all. But yesterday my daughter posted something on Facebook about my granddaughter. Not feeling well. You know, everyone prayed for her. That kind of thing. And as I read some of the comments, 
That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's excellent. That was excellent. That's so true. It's about that transformation. It is. And when you're totally sold out, we used to use that term when we was growing up. That person was sold out to Christ. Sold out. Everything belonged to God, including these words. Now, I tell you, that mouth, let me tell you, the mouth, woo wee. That, that can be, you know, because some people say, I'm just going to say whatever comes out of the mouth. Well, no, we need to make sure whatever comes out of the mouth is godly. That's what we need to do. And sometimes we've got to think about, you know, because you get that mind, that renewed that mind in Christ. You get the mind of Christ. You want to speak Christly things, godly things. You want to speak the right thing because we ought to be an encourager. You know, we ought to refrain from complaining, you know, as Christians. I see that all the time. I think it's time that we start proclaiming, proclaiming how good God is. It's amazing how you, you go from down to up. Once you, once you start getting out of this, oh, woe is me and all this stuff is, is going on, and said, hey, God, he's, he said he's going to supply all my needs, the rich in Christ's glory. He's going to start talking that positive. That's one thing I love about Jesus, you know. When, when, when people, you know, they, they, they was around him, they was drawn to him because he wanted to change their life. He wanted to love them. You know, always think about the, 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 uh, the woman had an issue of blood who came and, and touched him. You know, and I mean, and, 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 and she had all these things going on. She couldn't pay for it anymore, but she was striving. If I could just touch the end of his garden. Uh -huh. and, and Jesus walking through the crowd, who touched me? Wait, Jesus' disciples said, who touched you? What are you talking about? We can, you know, you got all these people bumping up against me. No, somebody touched me differently. Because virtue went out. Somebody wanted to reach my heart. Somebody wanted that healing. That's what that, that's what he wants somebody. And then when he turned around and she just bared her heart, this is the lady. He treated her with so much compassion. Uh -huh. I love that. Hallelujah. That's it. Awesome. Awesome. Already. Already healed. Yes. Someone else in the back? Yes.
got a, another, not, a, not really a close friend down in Texas that has had issues with his liver, and he, his liver's just too far gone. They've denied him a transplant, and they've just told him that the way hospice is about the only thing they, that they can do for him. So I believe in, especially for healing, healing there. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 and salvation for him. We, we don't know what he's at. Seriously. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's what the church is here for, to pray one for another. So if y'all would all stand, please. Anything else? We're going to go to prayer. Father God, we thank you for the privilege, as they said, to be able to come in your house. We thank you that our hope is in you. Lord, we thank you because you said, well, there's two or three tests agreeing that you would be in the midst. And it's all about you. It's all about being able to come together, one body to be able to pray and lift you up because you are the God that healeth thee. There is nothing, nothing too hard for you. Oh, Father God, we ask you to be with, with, with Jesse and, and, and just that whole situation for Mike. Lord, we just ask you because you are a God that hears our prayers. You are God that answers prayers. You are God that can bring those individuals from a long way off. Because like the prodigal son, when you saw in the Bible story says, when he was a long way off, the father saw him and he ran to him. That's what it's about. That's how much you care. Lord, we ask you to be with them. Lord, we ask you to, 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 to be with Cindy, to be with that whole family. Be with the situation with the voices of joy being able to come here. Lord, we thank you for working that out. And, and as Mike can be a minister during that time. Lord, we know that you would love to see everybody come to know you. That's what it's about. Everybody has a reason that they are born. They have a plan for their life. Oh, Father God, that, that Lord, we thank you for uh, uh, James, uh, brother, that situation, the best thing is he's a believer, and the best thing is that the healing is already taking place. Lord, we ask you to continue to work in Myron's life. Lord, we thank you for his life and his testimony that he will get 100% better every day. Yes, Father God, because we already claim that healing right now. And Father God, would, would, would Peter's friend that, that the Savior went from a tumor to assist, God, it's going to be completely wiped out. Because you are a name above every name. And that means you're a name above every name. Your name is above cancer. Your name is above sickness. Your name is above divorce. Your name is above broken homes. Hallelujah. And Father God, this other friend, and we don't know where he stands, salvation, the most important is to make sure that he knows you. Father God, that we ask you to be with everybody that's in this house today. Be with the needs that are represented here today, even those that are unspoken. We thank you for working in the families. We thank you for touching lives. We thank you for being our wonderful, our counselor, our father, our prince of peace. We thank you for making a way where there is no way. And Father God, thank you for meeting our needs. Thank you for giving us peace. Let our mind have that perfect peace as long as we stay on you. Let us learn not to, not to, not to complain, Lord, but proclaim your goodness every day. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let us never forget that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are going to be the same the same God that healed over there is going to be the God that heals here. Let us never forget that. Never let us forget that there's no problem too big for God to solve. There's none. God is bigger than that. And Father God, as we go into worship, let our hearts and our minds just be totally consumed by you. That it's all about you, God. Because you are the God that can change a life forever. You are a God 
that can come in our hearts, Lord. And, 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 and you know, David said, I, I hid the word in my heart and I might not sin against you. That that word sinks in our heart that we want only to do. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way in our life. Lord, we want to thank you today. We want to praise you today because you are a mighty God. You're a wonderful God. You're the one that loves us with an everlasting love. Let us never forget that. And we want to praise you and thank you. In your wonderful holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, if you please turn off cell phones and put them on vibrate. All right. Uh, the next. <laughs> That's all right. October 12th, 7 p.m. PM Eastern Gate House of Prayer here at the church. So all who can join us. We appreciate that. Okay. And now we're going to speak the word here. Yes. Yes. What's the date? It's actually the 14th. Eastern Gate's the 14th? Okay. My bad. I tell you, that's all right. October 14th, Gideon's here the 9th. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Now we're going to speak the word. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Would John and Juan come up? Mr. Juan, Mr. John, Don Juan, take the offering, please. Thank you. Brother Don, would you pray, please? Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here today. We're so thankful for the day you've given us. Lord, we just pray that you have your way in the service, that you open our minds and our understanding to your ways, and that we can proclaim you now that you bless this offering. May we have a great, mighty service. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank Hallelujah. you, Brother Tim. Bless you, Mike. It's always a blessing bless you. having you open up the service and bring us you. into that mindset, renewing our mind in the midst of things. God bless Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whew. What a vacation. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even though it was a working vacation, I still had uh, uh, a lot of uh, rays of uh, sunshine, little two-year-olds, one three-year-old sitting in my lap, wanting to sit with you, sit with you, just eating breakfast with little Abby and stuff like that, just loving on the Lord. So I'm just
Did you crank that up the other day? Did Pastor get in on it? 
grace and your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for watching over Suzanne uh, as her and Michael are gone this weekend. Thank you for watching over them, Lord, and she, her bass and Michael helping with sound. I know sound might be a little off today, but uh, make a joyful noise to the Lord. And uh, Roberto gone uh, also with his soon-to-be bride. Uh, they'll be back uh, next Sunday uh, with him and his vocals and his acoustic. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. The Lord's got a plan. He's got a way. He's got a purpose. <coughs> Hallelujah. I see one of my favorite altos here in the city. Bonnie's here today with us. Glory. Glory. And Hillary comes dropping on in. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. Bless you. Just join on in, and uh, let's just make a joyful noise to the Lord. It's kind of strange that uh, uh, the last song and the one we're going to do, uh, they know very well. So join in.
Praise the Lord. Let's praise Him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just bless You. We praise You. Hallelujah. You are great and greatly to be praised. There's none like You, Lord. You alone are worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless Your name this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Tim, for opening. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mike and worship team. Great job. Hallelujah. As always. And thank all of you for sharing your testimonies and your uh, prayer requests. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to uh, get right into the word. And uh, Sunday school kids, you can be dismissed. All the young people can be dismissed to go downstairs. I uh, talked a little bit about this Wednesday night, and uh, so I'm going to continue with this, uh, in this direction anyway. I, I think that sometimes, uh, you know, we get used to doing certain things a certain way, and we just automatically assume that that's the way it is, that's the way it's supposed to be. But uh, I think sometimes we need to, you know, under the old covenant, they'd say, uh, go back to the ancient landmarks, you know, where things were established. And uh, so that's what I want to do. And I, I'm talking about the church itself and uh, what our perceptions are and how we then live that out in our lives. Uh, it's important, obviously. It's important to each one of us individually, but it's also important to the people who are looking at us trying to figure out what the church is. And I think there's all sorts of definitions for that, and uh, individuals make their own uh, de definitions, and uh, collectively we, s we tend to do the same thing. But I think sometimes it's a good idea to go back and just see what it really is, and then see if we can't do that instead of all the other things that we do that we call church. Amen? So that's what I want to talk about to you, uh, with you this morning, and uh, I'd like to begin in Acts chapter 22. Acts 22, and I'm going to read verses 4 through 8. And I pers persecuted this way unto death, the binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters from the, unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell into the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. So I hope you've gotten the, the picture here that when Saul was persecuting the believers of his day, having them stoned to death, having them locked up, having them in prison, separating families, and all the other things that he was doing, Jesus says, you're doing it to me. Yeah. He didn't see it as an individual act against individuals. He saw it as an act against himself personally. Amen? So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 27. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 27 says... Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. You are the body of Christ, and members in particular. So, unfortunately, we have uh, diluted what it means to be a Christian in our days. We've also changed what it means to be a church. Most people associate a church with a physical building, and that's not surprising because that's where we gather together, but... Obviously, we realize the church is not a building, even though people say, where's your church, or where do you go to church? Even planting a church, I, I've, I've done this, and even establishing, uh, planting a church, in our day, it's, it's synonymous with finding a building, or building a building, or, or having a structure of some kind. Not only do we identify buildings as churches, we also classified churches 
according to the programs that they offer. If you, if you don't believe me, go through the Internet and check out churches and see how they advertise, uh, what, what it is they're promoting. Amen. One has a creative children's program. Another has a cool student ministry. Another has great resources for young marrieds or young divorced. They have something that revolves around programs for every age and every stage of life. And I've said it before, all of that's good. I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. I'm not saying that's bad. But it's obviously consumer-driven. It's a consumer or customer-designed approach to attract people to the church. Once people get to the building, then we've got to have programs that are attractive to their tastes. Programs that are customized to people's kids. Music that's attractive to people's tastes. Sermons that are aimed at people's wants. And in the extreme, it means when people come to church, they need a nice parking space and a latte or an espresso waiting when they walk through the door. You're laughing, but I've been in them. I've preached in them. Remember uh, up in Spencer? I mean, the whole thing was a like a brunch. <laughs> it was good. I, mean, I, I don't drink a lot of coffee, but... I don't need it because I'm hyper as it is, but, but I'm just saying, yeah. that's what churches do. Praise the Lord. Have to have a themed preschool ministry with a custom-built slide. It's advertised. You think I'm just making stuff up, but I'm telling you, this is how it is. State-of-the-art program that provides entertainment for teens. A top-notch band that's playing great music and a feel-good presentation that can be wrapped up in 20 to 30 minutes at the most. The real question, is all of that what God had in mind when he set up his church? Or is any of that what God had in mind when he set up the church? Well, that may seem normal and natural to us, because that's what we've seen most of our lives. But it's foreign to the New Testament. In the New Testament, you never once see the church described as a physical building. And the New Testament never once portrays the church as a conglomeration of customized programs. And so most of that is either extra biblical at best, which is adding to God's word, and unbiblical at worst, which is altering what the word says altogether. When you read the New Testament, you see a completely different picture of the church. Instead of a building, you see a body that's made up of members and a family made up of brothers and sisters who are living in Christ. Christians are joined together by Jesus' death, his spirit, his gospel, his life. Biblically, a church doesn't consist of people who just share parking and programs together. The church is made up of people who share the life of Christ with each other on a day-to-day, week-by-week basis. That's the pattern that Jesus set between himself and his disciples. That's what he did from the very beginning. That's the witness that you have in the New Testament. That's the pattern that Jesus established. Jesus taught those disciples how to live, how to love, how to interact with one another. He shared his life with them. They prayed together. They worshiped together. They ate together. They they did things together. Amen. The Bible portrays the church as a community of Christians who care for each other, who love one another who serve one another, who instruct one another, who forgive one another, who honor one another, motivate one another, encourage one another, comfort one another, pray for one another, edify one another, restore one another. You know, in life, 
you find over time, there's basically two, two ways that people deal with it in any area of your life, whether it's your career, your job, your, your family, your, your, your uh, hobbies, whatever it might be. There's interested and committed. I mean, it could be like this. I don't know how many of you had breakfast this morning. I usually don't on Sunday. I just eat a lot more in the afternoon. But. So ham and eggs, right? Now, the chicken's interested in that. But the pig is committed. Right? That's life. People say, well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in the church. Well, you're interested in church, but are you committed? All those one another's that I was talking about combined together reveal a picture. Not of people who come to a building filled with customized programs, but people who decided to lay down their lives yes. to love one another. Yes. That's the denying ourselves. Yes. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 16. And I want to read verses 16 through 18. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So God, in the person of Jesus, says, this is how the church is going to be. Now, the church didn't exist yet, but he's saying, I'm building the church on this reality that you're led by the Spirit, yes. that the truth is revealed to you by the Spirit, that God and you will be one. Yes. That's what Tim was talking about earlier. That's how we know that we are being led by the Spirit. God speaks to us and through us. It's, it's an awareness of God. It's a, it's a consciousness yes. of God's presence in our life, right? So Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet it, there, uh, what measure you meet it, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that's in thy brother's eye, and considerest not the beam that's in thy own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote that's in thine eye, and behold, a beam is in their own eye? You hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of your own eye, then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of the brother's eye. Praise the Lord. The church is... Uh, is basically not focusing on faults. Paul said it like this, I want to see nothing but Christ and him crucified. I promise you, if you want to pick around and dig around and look around, just be around. Yeah. You're going to find issues with other people. But guess what? They're going to find issues with you as well. Exactly. So the thing we have to do is quit looking at the things that we're not happy with and let's focus on the things that we do know yes. is important. That is that we love one another. As Christ loved the church, we are to love one another. Not just husband and wives, but as a body. Yes. As a family. We've talked about this plenty of times. All of us have family. To some degree, you've got brothers and sisters, you've got a parent, you've got you know, aunts, uncles, you've got something, if not your own children. And every one of us knows that there are times when we don't necessarily like individuals within the family because they're doing something really stupid or they're you know, being whatever. But it doesn't stop us from loving it. It doesn't stop us from loving them and caring about them. We don't just, you know, write them off and, and forget about them just because we're having an issue at the moment because of some behavioral issue or, or what have you, right? Mm -hmm. We are a family. We are a body. That's the way we have to, that's the way we have to operate. Yes. We, have to, we have to be there for one another. And not there to find fault but they're to try to edify, to encourage, to build up, just like you do with your own. Amen. 
kid messes up, you don't just beat them and talk about how ignorant they are. You tell them how they can overcome, how they can succeed, how they can be successful, how their life is going to be a good life if you just, you know, yes. put your attention where it needs to be. Amen. So let's, let's look at this. I want to read to you from John chapter 14. And I'm going to, I want to begin, not at the beginning, oddly enough, but, but simply because of the context. I want you to see the context of this where Jesus is speaking, okay? So in John chapter 14, I want to start at verse 7 and read through uh, 12. John 14, uh, verse 7 through 12. So he says, if he had known me, he should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Now, look, at, I, I want you to pay attention. We, we read this all the time. But this, again, goes to something Tim was speaking of earlier. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Okay, that's the context that chapter 14, verses 1 through 6 is about. We read verses 1 through 6 like it's a completely different thought, and then we just move right on to this, but it's not. It's the context by which he ends up Speaking of all these other, I'm in him, he's in me, you're in us, right? So let's go back to John 14, and I want to read verses 1 through 6. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? In other words, he's saying, we don't know what you're talking about. We don't know where you're going, and we don't know how to get there. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, if you can, uh, Sheila, I'm sorry, go back to verse 1 and 2 or 3 whatever you can get up there at the time. He's not talking about a physical location here. No. He's talking about a spiritual reality. Yes. He's talking about being in the Father and the Father being in you. I don't want to mess with your thoughts of heaven here because there is a heaven and we're going to go there and all of that, but that's not what he's talking about. This isn't about heaven. This is about a place in God. Yes. This is about a place in the Father, because he goes on and talks about, that's all he talks about for the rest of that seven or eight verses. Yes. So he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. It, he hadn't gone yet. They hadn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They hadn't become united with God again, because... He hadn't died and been resurrected. So he said, I have to go away. I've got to die, and I'm coming back. Yes. Not the second coming. The Holy Spirit is coming back, the Spirit of God, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what he's talking about here. So I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Where is he? Seated at the right hand of the Father. He's in the Father. Father and he are one. He tells us that over and over and over. Yes. That's what he's talking about here, that our goal, that our purpose, our aim is to be one with the Father. Yes. To be in Christ and Christ in us. Yes. You cannot be in Christ without being in the Father. He, I and the Father are one, he said. Yes. Now you're not getting into him without getting into God. He's trying to give us an explanation here of what this whole salvation thing in the church is all about. Yes. 
And somehow, we've managed to screw it up and make it about everything but this. You are a believer, and as a believer, you have been born into God. We were created out of God. We came from God. He tells us that. He, we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. He's putting us back. He's putting us back in the spiritual reality that we came from. And we've made it all about programs, and we've made it all about this thing and that thing and, and this particular part of the service and that part of the service, when all this is about is believers coming together as one in Christ, yes. identifying Christ alone, Amen. recognizing God in each one of us. Amen. And we've made it all about, I'm not against doing good things and good work. We ought to. But we make that our religion. And that's what it is. It's religion. He said, here's religion. You want to know perfect religion? Take care of the widows. Take care of the orphans. Feed the poor. Right? And I'm, not, I'm all for all of that. But I'm saying that's not church. Church is the body coming together. The church is us recognizing I and the Father are one. Yes. Yes. The church is being aware that where I go, God goes. Yes. I know God is everywhere, but he can be specific. Yes. Right? I mean, he takes up all space. But he isn't manifesting in every certain spot that he exists. No. He manifests where there is a body to manifest him. Yes. And we are not, I'm not the body. And as we say that, well, I am the body. I don't need to be involved in the body. You're not the body. You are a member. Right. That's what he told us at the very beginning. Members in particular. Yeah. Where's a hand? Today you're a face. Tomorrow you're a foot. Next week you may be something else. Yeah. You are what you've got to be wherever you are, wherever that particular member needs to be manifest. Yes. But as we come together, the body becomes one. Hands have arms. Arms have shoulders. Shoulders have a trunk. Trunk has, you know, a lower body. All of a sudden, the body becomes complete. Yes. That's what people are looking for. Not another program. Right. Not another how wonderful person I am because I feel bad about this person's problem. I, we need to have compassion. There's no question about it. But it starts with us. And I'm going to show you scripturally, that's the reality. It isn't us running down the street trying to do something for a stranger. We should do that. But this begins right here. You can hate your other members of your body and run around and do all sorts of other things out there, but it's, it's inconsequential as far as God's concerned because if you aren't identifying with you being in him and him in you, you've missed the whole point of what Christ came for. The only reason he dealt with sin was because sin was in the way of us being one with the Father because of his holiness, because of his righteousness, because of his perfection. So sin had to be dealt with only for that reason, not because sin was the big thing. Obviously, it wasn't too big a deal. He handled it. The, the issue was our separation from the Father, our disconnect from our real identity, from who and what we are and what we can be in Christ. In Christ, we can do all things. Amen. Didn't he, didn't he even say himself, uh, you know, go back to verse 6 if you can, Sheila. John 14. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. How are you going to get in the Father? By being in Christ. Because Christ and the Father are one. Yes. You can't separate them. Once we're born again, you can't separate us either. That's right. That's right. He said, Here's, this is eternal life that you know Jesus Christ and God who sent him. Amen. That's the eternal life we're talking about. Because in God is eternal life. Life everlasting. It's called God life. Yes. And once you're in him, you're in eternity. You yes. are an eternal being. Yes. You'll have a physical demise at some point, unless the Lord returns before then. But you're eternal. You're not ever going to die. Right. Because of the part of you that is one with God cannot be separated from God. It's your spirit. Amen? You've been born of the spirit. Born from above. And instead of focusing on our oneness with God, 
we have all this other stuff that is focusing on this exactly. instead of him. Amen. And we're teaching our children and unbelievers that this is religion, that this is, that this is Christianity. Yeah. I'll grant you it's religion, but it's not Christianity. It's, true. it's not in here. It's exactly. Go Come back and read this sometime. I mean the New Testament and read it like, you know, like I don't have a pre-planned understanding of what it is. Like I don't already have a, 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 a reality that I have to make this fit. Right. But just go back and read it and you'll see 90% of what we do has nothing to do with this. Right. It's about consumerism. It's about how many people can I get in my building. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many can I get on my team? You notice there was no denominations. What happened there? Well, here's a clue. We did. Paul dealt with it back in the first century church, and he, he addressed it as it should be addressed. Well, I'm of a, I'm a, a, a Paulus. I'm a, he said, you know, in essence, what he said was, did either one of them die for you? He said, thank God I didn't baptize any of you. You'd be claiming that I was your savior. But because we identify with an individual or a particular program, we gravitate to that. That becomes our religion, and Jesus becomes secondary. In church, we belong to one another, and we belong to one another in a way that makes us responsible for one another. It's family. Jesus said... God said, I can't deny you or I'd have to deny myself. Right? right? Why, why would he say that? Because you and he are one. Right. The only way you can deny you once you've been born again is by him denying himself. Exactly. We're not separate entities here. He says in the end it's all going to wrap up one way. Everything's in God. It goes back to God where it came from. Amen. Well, in the church we've already gone there. We just don't know it. It's more than standing next to somebody singing songs once or twice a week. Exactly. It's being led by the Spirit. It's being one with God. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I but Christ liveth in me. Now, without the context that we've just discovered here or talked about, this makes absolutely no sense. It sounds schizophrenic. Right? right? I'm dead. I'm not dead. I'm alive, but I'm not dead. I'm, I'm not alive. I'm living, but it's not me that's living. The only way this makes any kind of sense is in the context of what Jesus is telling his disciples. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'm coming back. So that you can be where I am. Yes. The Spirit's coming back so that we can be in the Father. The same as Jesus was declaring that he was at that particular time. And then telling him there's only one way. There's only one way back to the garden, right? Yes. And it's through Jesus. Exactly. It's in him. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Being a member of a church means we're responsible for helping one another grow as believers. We need each other in the daily battle that's called being a Christian. Yes. It's following Christ. That's why we come together. That's why we have testimonies. Yes. Listen, I, y'all may think, well, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't hear what I hear. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people come and say, there's something wrong there. But yeah, there's people here. People go from church to church to church to church to church to church. Why? Because they're looking for the one thing that they're not going to find until somebody says, this is what we're really looking about. This is what we're really talking about. This is what it's really all about. Right. 
So it isn't, it, you know, people come here and they say, well, it's not, it's not, that's not like church. No, it's not. We don't care. We're not trying to be like what somebody thinks it's supposed to be. We're trying to get as close to this as we can, and it's not easy. It's awkward. Right. So you got people sharing with their struggles, with their breakthroughs, with their victories, with their hopes, with their aspirations, what they want it to be, and what, what really is the reality in their life at the moment. It brings people together. It, it helps us to understand one another. And if you're too shy or timid or, uh, you know, self-conscious to share that, that's okay, because you're hearing things that you know are in your heart anyway, even if you don't say it. Right. It gives you the opportunity to say, whoa, maybe I'm not the only one dealing with this. Maybe I'm not the only oddball that has a problem or that has a struggle or that has an issue. So you don't have to unless you're comfortable, and if you are comfortable, you should. No. So that the others that are there can say, you know what? I'm right where I belong. These are real people. These are people that got issues. These are people that got struggles. These are people that, but they're trusting God. They're believing that God is bigger than their issue or they wouldn't come together. We need to come together because you're not going to get that kind of edification. You're not going to get that kind of encouragement anywhere but in a church that really believes this. And I've said from day one, we're not a large church. I don't know that we ever will be. I'm not laying awake nights worrying about it, if you want to know the truth. You may think, well, he's just because he's slothful or he's indifferent or whatever. No, that's not my point. It's God that adds to the church daily such as should be saved. All, my responsibility is to try to make this as close to that reality as I can Come on. with the help of God. Amen. If I miss it, I miss it. Thank God for grace. Amen. He empowers me to do what I can only do by his empowerment, and then he forgives me when I fail to do it. Man, that's a, that's a win-win any way you look at it. Yes. If you just put the effort out there, even if you fail, you get forgiven. Yes. It doesn't have, you don't have to be perfect at this because none of us are. Right. That's why we go through Jesus. Right? right? The author and finisher of our faith. Yeah. He makes us accessible or makes God accessible to us through him. Yes. He became sin. So that we could become the righteousness of God, so we could come boldly to the throne of grace, so we could come and enter into the presence of God, not for a momentary handout, but for a lifestyle, yes. for a lifelong way of living. Yes. And it, isn't, it, isn't, it doesn't come by rules. It isn't how well you keep the list. Thank God it's not because every one of us fail. We don't fail at the same thing, but we all fail. So... Your failure is worse than my failure because it's only because it's not my failure. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It, it's uncomfortable, but that's the body. That's what the body does. It encourages, it edifies, it accepts, it's family. You know, you always have, uh, in a family, you've always got different personalities, right? That's why you got big brothers punching out the kid down the street that punched out your little brother, right? Because he was a bully or he picked on him or he it wasn't fair. I mean... Families, and, and we'll see this flaw in a family member. Hopefully they can't see ours, but they do. But we just are polite because we love each other. Right. We accept each other. Yeah. On. One family member may be very, you know, gregarious and outgoing. The, ne the other brother or sister, they may be more shy and, 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 and timid and, and less, you know, assertive. Maybe one's more talented in this area, and, and this one doesn't have that gift, that same gift. But we don't love them any different. We find the thing that they are good at, and we work on that. We focus on that. We share that. We, we celebrate that. That's what this is. It's a family. It's not an organization. Come on. It's brothers and sisters seeing our, our frailty, our, our weaknesses, our, 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 our failures. And we love each other anyway. And we say, it's okay. You know, we'll get through this. We'll make it happen. We'll, 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 we'll get better. Come on. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that all of the discipline in the world won't make you better. Right. It'll make you angry. It'll make you bitter. It'll make you rebellious most of the time. Yeah. It's acceptance. It's love. Yes. Right. And you say, well, you're giving them a free pass. No. Come on, man. They're doing it anyway. <laughs> they're doing what they're doing without a pass. Let's love them in the midst of it. I mean, that's the way. That's the way they can feel whole again. That's the way they can feel complete. That's the way they can feel like, hey, I do have value. This one thing is not me. It's just something I do. 
I'm not comfortable. I don't like it, but it's just a problem, right? But it's not me. It's not my identity. We're able to do that with family members. We can, we can pick out the flaw and say, that's not them. That's an aberration. That's just a, that's a b- bad habit they've got. That's a bad behavior. But it's not who they are because I know who they are. They're, they're family. They're, they're my child. They're my brother. They're my sister, right? Yep. That's what this is supposed to be. And if it ever becomes that, the world will be magnetized to it. It will be drawn to it, not because of our goodness, not because of our programs, but because they see genuine love between people who don't have to love each other. Come on. And they feel comfortable there. They feel like this is what I'm looking for. I didn't even know what it was I was looking for, but I feel good there. I feel comfortable there. I don't have to prove anything. I can relax and be me. And know that somebody cares. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now it'd be great if we were just all wonderful people like that. <clears throat> and I think we are, you know, at the core. But what I'm saying is, this reveals God. Yes. It's not about us. It's not about everybody going, oh wow, they're such a wonderful people. That may be the thing that attracts them initially. But what they find out is that thing that they're seeing is God. There it is. That thing they're experiencing is God's love. It's God's acceptance, it's God's forgiveness, it's God's grace, it's God's mercy, it's God's, it's God's way of looking at everybody and saying they're all valuable, they all have great intrinsic value, they all, they all are worthy yes. of my sacrifice. Yes. Yes. For us to look at them any differently denies the value of that sacrifice. Oh, I'm a believer. I, I, I don't need to be part of a body. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 27. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So we're all members, and collectively we become the body. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we've all been made to drink from one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the, if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Mm-hmm. If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Right. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member... Where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the foot, I have no need of you. You can't say, I don't need him. I don't need her. You can't unless you could say, I don't need this eye. You might like this eye better than this eye. You might have one ear that hears better than the other ear. You might have some things that you you don't want at all. But in order to be the body, you've got to have all of it. I can't say the hand I've no need to be. Nay, much more these members, verse 22, nay, much more these members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable... Upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part, that part which lacked, which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now, 
ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Believers in the Bible were joined together into local bodies. When you look at the letters of the New Testament, they're addressed to particular people identified as the church in a particular place. You, you can go through and read any of them and you'll see the same thing. Say, well, don't need to go to church to be a part of the local body. Yes, you do. Because otherwise, you're just a member somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that I don't have to go to church to go to heaven. That's true. Right. You could be born again and never enter into the church again, never enter into a congregation, and you can go to heaven. But you're not operating as the body. I'm not picking on anybody. Listen, I've got family. We talk about this. Sons and daughters. And I tell them all the same thing. I don't care where you go to church. Go to church. Just go and be a part of somebody. If you're uncomfortable because it's dad that's preaching and, and you don't want to feel like you're being uh, you know, identified as the preacher's child or, or that somehow people are going to have expectations for you that are greater than somebody else's, I get it. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. So just go. Just go somewhere where you can be with other people who believe. Come on. Again, I, I'm not going to go here just for the sake of time this morning, but Romans 1, 6 through 12, it talks about it. 1 Corinthians 1, 1 through 10 talks about it. Galatians 1, 1 and 2 talks about it. Uh, Galatians 6, 1 through 6 talks about it. Ephesians 1 uh, and, and verse 15, or chapter, or excuse me, yeah, verse 15 and 16. And uh, Philippians 1, 1 through 5, and I uh, spoke quite a bit Wednesday night. They're all identified as local bodies, right. local churches that were meeting together, people coming together that were believers at a specific place. It wasn't, it wasn't a building necessarily. I mean, at some point, they had to meet in the building. They had to have a building to get together in. Amen. But the building wasn't the church. The church was the people, amen, who had life Beliefs who had agreed in, in this uh, redemptive work of Christ right. and wanting to share it with one another, right. wanting to experience it over and over. So, amen? So why would we want to have a Christian life apart from the church? I mean, I don't, I just don't, it doesn't make sense to me in any logical way. I know churches aren't perfect. I know that they've got problems. I know we have problems. I know we're imperfect. But it's because we are people. I mean, I, I hear it all the time. This guy's, you know, one guy's telling this other guy, and the guy's telling me, oh, you need to go to this particular church because they got this thing going on. Or you need to go to that church. And I said, go, man, go. Don't let the door hit you in the rear end on the way out. I mean, if that's what you need, then go and get what you need. Right. I never twisted anybody's arm to be a part of this congregation or this, this body. Right. People will come for whatever reason. Amen. I don't mean, I'm not trying to be rude or crude. I'm just saying, I don't, I got to tell you the truth. I don't lay awake nights worrying about it. Because I, I learned a long time ago, I can't control it. People you invest the most in often are the first ones to leave. I've experienced it over and over and over. Time, hours and hours spent with people. Trying to encourage, trying to lift up, trying to show them how much God cares about them, that God is investing in them. Yes. And the first thing comes along, and away they go, and I don't see or hear from them again for 10 years. Now, I could lay around and be bitter about that and upset, but that's people, man. Come on. Jesus said he was never disappointed in men because he knew them. Exactly. Well, I know them because I am one. Right? right? So I'm not, I don't get disappointed. I, I get disappointed, but I don't get discouraged because of that. Right. Right. People are just people. And we're supposed to be providing, uh, as believers, a comfortable, safe place for them to exercise their oneness with God, yes, Lord. with others, mm -hmm. so that they can get built up and go out there and live their life that way. Right. Exactly. So they can be an influence. Yes. So they can be effective without being weird, right. without being odd and strange. Come on. So again, the question remains, you say, I'm a Christian. Are you sharing your life with other believers in a New Testament way? Are you loving one another? Are you serving one another? Are you caring for one another? 
Are you watching out for one another? Now, I, honestly, I can say that's true here. We're, we're not perfect. I mean, I'm not saying we're, we have perfection in a bottle here and got it all figured out. But I see it on a regular basis. I see the, the sacrifices people make for other people. I see the financial uh, blessings that come from people who, I mean, there are people that, that give all the time, even if they're not here. Because they support the concept. They support the body. Mm -hmm. And when we do this in the church, we express the love of Christ to the world that's out there. Yes. Right. <coughs> you know, when I was a kid, I went to a very nominal church that didn't really even preach a salvation message other than God was real and, and Jesus uh, died on the cross. But there wasn't any real plan of salvation laid out for you or anything else. But as a kid going there, and I mean a kid, eight, nine, seven, what, in that area, and, and all we did really was color little pictures of Jesus, you know, him knocking on the door or him you know, with the fishermen, you know, and they're pulling in the nets. You, you all seen the little coloring books and you, you probably colored them yourself. But here's the deal. It made God real to me. I didn't get saved then, or at least not to my knowledge. And I went through most of my life in total rebellion against everything. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right? But when finally, when I got to where I couldn't deal with my own failures and my own you know, rebellious attitudes and behaviors and the consequences, I knew I could look to God. I wasn't, I knew there was a God. I just didn't think he was interested much in me outside of wanting to fix me, correct me, punch me up, beat me up, do something to get me on the right track. But, it, but the, the, just the knowledge of God. So I'm, what I'm saying is, yeah, we want programs for kids. We, we want them to be, you know, excited about being in church. We want to be encouraged. But I'm telling you, you can sow seeds in the simplest ways without having the most technologically advanced and having all of the, the whistles and, and, and bows. If you can love one another, if they can see that, if they can see that and experience that, that's the greatest gift you can give them. Come on. That's better than all the programs in the world. Because it makes God real. If he's real to you, he'll be real to them. John 13, verses 34 and 35. So I guess, I mean, the older I get, the less time I have to waste. You know, it's like the, if I see, uh, what was that movie? Guy gets falsely imprisoned and, uh, I can't think of the name of it, but, you know, the, the, the key phrase to me in the whole show was, he says to, the, to Morgan Freeman, he, the, the guy's sister, Morgan Freeman, he says, I guess it just comes down to this. Get busy living or get busy dying. Mm. Shawshank Redemption, there you go. She doesn't watch them. She just writes them down so I'll know which ones to rent the next time. Just kidding. <laughs> but I'm just saying. That's where all of us are. Mm -hmm. To live is Christ. To die is gain. If we're not living this life in Christ, and again, I'm not talking about being religious. I'm not talking about being so flaky and, 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 and unreal in your life that you can't enjoy life. But I'm saying live your life in him. Yes. Yep. Yes. Let him be revealed. Let, yes. let, let him. You know, it's not hard to hear from God. No. It's only hard when we don't listen. If you have the spirit, you are one with God. I, you cannot tell me that you can't hear from God. Come on. It's not, it's not complicated. Amen. Come on. He'll lead you and guide you into all truth. Yes. Yes. He'll show you the girl at the Dairy Queen, Amen. the guy at Walmart, the neighbor, the family member, the, the, the whoever. Because he knows. 
A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. That's how, you, that's how you're known. Not by how many tracks you hand out. Not by standing on the street corner and saying, you know, hell is on its way and, you know, the end is near and all that kind of stuff. I don't care who does that. I'm just saying that's not what the scripture says. It says the reason, the way people will know that we are believers is that we have loved one for another. Amen. Now that's easy. You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to have miracle ministry. It's love. Amen. And God's revealed. Uh -huh. We're doing all kinds of stuff trying to reveal God and people are looking at us like we're out of our minds. Yeah. And, they, and they should most of the time. Because we act so bizarre and so unnatural. We're supernaturally natural. Or naturally supernatural. We don't have to try to be. We just need to love and allow God to do what God does. God is love. Praise the Lord. All right, John 17, verses 20 through 26. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. I'd say that's high priority. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them yes. as thou hast loved me. Yes, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, mm -hmm. that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. What does that sound like to you? If we're going to be with him, we have to be with God. Right. Yes. I, I, he says, Father, I want, this is what I'm asking for. This is my prayer that they would be in me so that they can be where I am, yes. which is in you. Yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which thou hast given me, thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I've known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Yeah. The world doesn't know. They, 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 either they're agnostic or atheistic or, or just plain ignorant. But even if they believe that there is a God, they don't know him. They need to have some evidence. Yes. And the evidence is that me running around out on the street telling everybody how horribly bad they are and that they're going to hell in the next 15 minutes or whatever. What they need is to see people loving one another in their imperfections, but loving them anyway, embracing them, edifying them, encouraging them, because that's how our Father is. Yes. I mean, if you don't know that, let's get back to, you know, Christianity 101. God is love. God forgives. God is graceful. God, God is of all about empowering people and helping them to overcome the things that life tries to destroy them with. Yes. Right. I've declared them thy name unto them and will declare it that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I am. I, you know, people all the time trying to manifest. I've got some advice for you. Try manifesting this. That would be the closest thing to a manifestation of God that most people would ever see in their life. We think it's a miracle. We think it's a healing. We think it's this and it's that. No, all of those things are realities, but they come from that. Exactly. They come from the love of the Father. They come from God's love for his creation. Yes. It's not his will that any perish. He wouldn't have suffered what he suffered if he didn't want us healed. Yes. Come on. When Tim was talking, I was looking in, I think it's Psalms 86 or 87, where he says, you know, I, won't, I will not deny my covenant exactly. or the words that have gone forth out of my mouth. I cannot deny them. If God said it, it's got to happen, but it's only going to happen to people that believe it will happen, who, yes. who are operating within the paradigm that God has established for us. I've got to 
tell you, look, I watch Christian TV. I don't watch a lot of it, but I watch it. And most of it, I don't watch it because it's embarrassing. Amen. And I, you, you, then you talk to people and they say, well, are you a believer? Sure, I'm a Christian. Oh, my God. How do, they, how do they identify a Christian? By something they've seen on television. By some minister that has failed. Or by some, or, or, you know, some ministry that is just always money grubbing and trying to rip people off and take advantage of them. Selling blessings, you know, give me ten and you'll get a hundred. And give me a hundred you'll get a thousand. All this BS that is just about me, 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 me. Yes. When it's what we want, what we need is God. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his way of, its God, of getting to God. Yes. Jesus, the righteousness of God. Yes. Seek that. And this stuff gets added. You can, you can have the stuff. But if you're looking for the stuff, thinking that in the stuff you'll find God, you're, you're sadly confused. Yes. Yes. You're just going to have stuff. Uh -huh. Amen. The truth is, Jesus went about healing all that were sick. The infirmed and all of that, right? Yep. But every one of those people were going to die anyhow. Right. Eventually, they would die. Right. Even Lazarus raised him from the dead. Yep. But he's still going to die. He had a mir miracle, but the miracles were all temporary. Right. The love of God is eternal. Yes. Yes. It changes people. Yes. It's the thing that will change people. I've talked to you about people I've prayed for, people I've seen healed. Young guy in Houston, Texas, or just east of Houston. Mm -hmm. Totally delivered. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. In a diabetic coma. Mm -hmm. And never come to Jesus, to my knowledge. He had, to, he had a miracle. Yeah. But the miracle did nothing for him but prolong his agony. Yeah. Prolong his suffering. His humanity without Christ. People see the, the life of Christ in the church, then they'll believe the love of God Amen. for the world. Amen. Not when they see our programs, not when they hear our judgment, but when they see our love. Yes. It's just another reason why every believer ought to be committed to the church. Say, well, what else is he going to say? He's the pastor. Well, listen, if that was my criteria, I'd have bailed years ago, believe me. If you think I'm kidding, ask my wife. <laughs> I'm in this, and we just had this conversation last week in one of my depressed moods, not being in, the, in Christ as I should have been at the time, but I was upset. I was aggravated. I was frustrated. I thought, you know, I'm 68 years old. I don't need this. I don't need everybody else's issues. I got plenty. <laughs> and what? So for what? See, I'm just making it all about me. But this ain't about me. And as my wife was quick to remind me, it was never about you. If this is what God gave you to do, then it's what you do. You may not like doing it all the time. It may not always be the, the reward that you're looking for. It may not always be there. But I got to tell you, there is a satisfaction yes. and a fulfillment yes. that if I was in any other job, mm -hmm. I'd have left this thing so fast, it would have looked like my hair was on fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was just about, you know, success. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, in human terms. Right. That, that, that's not what it's about. And God takes care of me. And thank God he uses people. That's what he does. He uses people to bless us. That's, listen, that's where we see God. Right. Yes. People are loving each other. Yes. Exactly. They may not like every message I preach. I don't know how you could. She doesn't even like all of them. <laughs> But we love each other. We love one another. We, 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 we reveal a, the reality of what God really is like, what God's really about. Amen. 
He's not about how perfectly we can cross every T and dot every I and get all of our acts together so that we look really spiritual and religious. He's about loving us with all of our faults, with all of our flaws, and just saying, come to me. Those of you that are wore out and struggling and tired of, of all the religion and all the effort and all the exertion and getting nowhere, just come to me and rest in my love. That's what the church should be. It ought to be a, a resting place, a place where you can un, unloose, you know, get let loose and, 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 and feel free to be yourself. Without, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, we might not like that when it's somebody else who isn't going to get condemned for their behavior or their failures. But thank God it comes around, and I get to take advantage of it too. So for me to pick the yeah. moat out of somebody else's eye when I I got to have help seeing the moat because I got this beam in my own. Right. I mean, we don't like that. I don't like it. I like to find people that are all screwed up because it makes me feel so superior. <laughs> but at some point, I got to look in the mirror. Yes. Amen? At some point, I got to listen to that little voice inside of me yes. that says, whoa, buddy, that looked a lot like you. That's why I'm saying it's not hard to hear from God if we just shut up long enough and let him talk. And I promise you, it won't sound like religion. It'll sound like doting, spoiling popo. <laughs> Amen. One who just looks at the kids and says, they're just kids. They'll be all right. I'm going to love them right through this. That's how he sees us. That's how we need to see each other. We need to be committed to the church. Again, get the semantics. I'm not talking about the building. I'm not talking about an organization. We need to be committed to one another, to the church, to the members in particular. Right? Why? So that the glory of God can be made known to the world. But even more than that, look at Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So even if nobody darkens the doors of this church, there are angelic beings who want to look into this stuff. We know that, right? And there are demons who are being witnessed to every time we come together. I know it will impact the world out there, but I also know that it impacts principalities, powers, and so forth. To the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So Paul says that by the church or through the church the manifold wisdom of God will be made known to rulers and authorities in heavenly realms. God's design is to show the greatness of him of his character, of his reality, to angels and to demons alike through the reality of this. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You think this is just people getting together on Wednesday and Sunday? No. It's God's marquee. It's, it's God's declaration to all of the beings Angelic and demonic. Mm -hmm. There's the mystery. There's the character of God. There's the reality of God. God's design is to show that. His plan is to take men and women like you and me, who once were objects of wrath, because we were alienated, separated from God, who he wants to, it's his way of declaring. He 
this. I take these objects of wrath, of my wrath, of my anger, and turn them and transform them into objects of affection to show the love and the grace and the goodness of God himself. Praise the Lord. And then, along with that, there's an eternal revelation. Eternal revelation to the hosts of heaven and the demons of hell. He is all wise, all loving, all powerful, and worthy of praise yes. of all people Amen. and all creation Amen. throughout time. Yes. That is the ultimate reason why every follower, every believer, ought to consistently be a part of the church. Amen. Some may think, well, I can... I can live for God's glory on my own. But the message of God's word is that God's glory is most perfectly, most gloriously displayed, not through you or not through me, but through us, the body. God raises up the church as to all creation in heaven and earth and beneath the earth. This is the bride. This is the body of Christ, bought, purchased by his blood, to be my people, to receive my power, to enjoy my presence, and to declare my praise. Amen. That's the church. It's not complicated. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I'm just about done here. See, I had to preface this by not being the one who does the 20 to 30 minute rap. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with God. God is a spirit. No man has seen him. That's what we got. Yes. We got that invisible spirit, that eternal being, that ancient of days in us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Set upon each of them, and they were all filled with that, with God. And they began to speak with other tongues as that same spirit gave them the utterance. Amen? That's the birth of the church. Right. Now why would we think that the, you know, the continuation of that would be different than the original? Exactly. It was just people came together in a certain place who were expecting God. Mm -hmm. And they were sharing with one another, loving with each other, yes. accepting one another. And God Almighty comes and enters into each one of them. Yep. Come on. 120 people were gathered there See, to come to Christ is to come to a community of believers. Yes. It's what it is. According to God's plan, when that happens, nothing has the power to stop the spread of the gospel. It hasn't got anything to do with our numbers. It has to do with our identity. Come on. The gates of hell will not, cannot prevail against the body. Right. Disciples were made. Churches were multiplied in places that the apostles never went. Right. How? Because this community of believers just went about, and wherever they went, they took Jesus with them. Yes. They took the love of God with them. People saw it, they wanted it, another church comes up. Yeah. Another body of believers. Amen. People coming together and being transformed by the power of Christ. Yes. Yes, Lord. So, we love people. We encourage people. We edify people. We, we do everything we can to embrace them. And 
Believe it or not, people are transformed by that. That is the love of God shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And if you think that'd be easy, try it. You can only do it by the power of God. You can only do it by the Spirit. You have to be in Christ. You have to stay, fo- you have, that has to be your focus. You can live your life. You can, have, you can still have your life. You can have all the stuff you like. Uh, do the things you do, right? But you can do it with the mind of Christ. You can do it empowered by God. Yes. We've thought, if I just, you know, alienate, you know, enough people or things that somehow now I'll look more like Jesus. No, you won't. You'll just look like a hypocrite. Right. Jesus is revealed through our humanness. His power is made perfect in weakness. The one thing we can do is choose to love. And the empowering comes as a result of that. Faith worketh by love. The ordinary, doing the extraordinary. That's God's design for the church. And we can't settle for less. We're in him, we're led by his spirit. If we're led by his spirit, God will add to the church, such should we say. And we will all be transformed by that inner reality of Christ in us, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. Relax. You're in good company. Praise the Lord. According to God, this is his body. This is his bride. It doesn't get any better than this. So we ought to party like it's 1999, right up to the day we leave this place. Get busy living. The dying will take care of itself. Amen? Give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience. Have a great rest of the week. Stay focused. God's in control. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.